uh, we'll go over one of my games today and uh, it's a very interesting game I played in 2006 my opponent is a very strong grandmaster uh, Sergei Tivyakov and uh, this tournament was in uh, Italy and one of the best tournaments uh, I ever played my result was uh, you know very seven and a half out of nine and about 2800 FIDE rating performance so best performance I've had so let's go over this game I'm playing with the white pieces so d4 knight f6 c4 e6 so Tivyakov uh, is known for you know playing this opening for many many years it's a Nimzo Indian defense he likes to play so if you play knight c3 here he will go bishop b4 and he's considered an expert in this opening so very experienced and when I prepared against him I saw that he's played like so many games in this opening so I decided to play something that he's going to be not as familiar with so I played knight f3 move here and he played b6 and I played a3 here Petrosian system named after the world champion Petrosian yeah he played like this many games and uh, in this position uh, he had some games so he played both moves there you can play bishop a6 or you can play bishop b7 the reason it's I want to show you this game it's um, a very simple game you will see like I didn't do anything really special in this game but in a crucial moment I find one move and I'm gonna stop at that point see if you can find that one move which will give me a nice advantage so in the opening it's gonna be you know pretty equal so he played bishop a6 um, I played the e3 move very solid move so he plays d5 knight bd2 so he played bishop e7 b4 castle bishop b2 just developing my pieces now he takes on c4 and what do you think what is the best way to recapture the pawn here with a knight or a bishop here so if you were playing this game you would capture back with which piece uh-huh bishop. Uh bishop or knight okay let's see why would you capture with the bishop Correct. The knight has already been moved, so you, you want to spend too many time to be on pieces you're going to exchange. Uh huh, good, yes. Uh huh, good. Uh, and August, you, you would take with the knight? Well, no, just because uh, I generally try to uh, avoid giving up bishops this early, I try to, uh, if I'm going to trade pieces, I'm going to trade a knight for a bishop first. They yeah. Do with later well, in 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 general, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In general, it's you shouldn't avoid exchange. In openings, you you know you're gonna exchange some pieces. It's important to exchange to the equal value piece. So here, we exchange the bishop for a bishop, and most important thing as mentioned, this will help us to castle. Okay. So that's why you want to take back with the bishop, because you want to castle. And in order to do that, if you take with a knight, you're going to have to move your bishop anyway to castle. Yeah. So that takes more time. And his bishop is pretty active here. If you look at the position here, whose bishop is more active, your bishop or his bishop? Black bishop. Black bishop, right? And from general, uh, this is a general rule I was taught when I was very small. So it's, a, it's when you, when opponent has an active piece and you have the same type of piece that is not very active, it's a good idea to exchange it. Okay, so in this position, the way you look at it, his bishop is more active than yours. So you definitely want to exchange it. So I took, he takes, knight takes c4, and I need a few more moves here. If I can just castle, put my rook on c1, in some point play e4, I have a nice position here. Yes. Yes, because otherwise uh, I will take the bishop, then he's going to have to put the knight on the side. And we know that we don't want to have a knight on the side of the board, because less squares to go to and not controlling the central squares. 
Okay? So that's why he's going to take. This is the best move. But here he played a very, very good move, I think. Because otherwise he's just slightly worse. Now let's see if we can find his move. I like you. I'm going to flip for a second the board. For a moment you will play with black pieces here. So what do you think is the best move here for black to try to equalize here? That's a difficult move to find. Because he has advantage of the fact that his king is castled and mine is still in the center. And he can do something about that. Which move can he play here to create some threats? Yes, this game came a little bit surprised for me too. It's a, it's a good move. It's not easy to find though. Active, active. Black needs to play more active here because if he just lets me castle, then I have a slightly better position. Like queen d5 or something? Yeah. Queen d5, you could do that, but then I just, just go rook c1 yeah. or queen c2. Can he do something since I have my pawn on before? Can he do something about that since I kind of advanced a little bit too soon? Yeah? My king is still in the middle. Can he do something about that? Which move? Pawn to A5. Correct. The move is A5. A strong move here. Now we will see why this is a good move. As I mentioned, if you would have just played a normal move, I would have just castle. And I have a slightly better game. But after B5, I would like to call B5 here. But if I play this move now, it's not going to be good for me. Why? Why can't I just play B5? Looks like a strong pawn to have here, huh? But this is losing a pawn here. Queen now queen d5, see? Now queen d5, attacking the pawn, attacking the knight. Looks like I can play queen b3 still, protecting both. Can I? A4. A4, correct. And now I lose the pawn. So see, he had this nice little sequence, and he, he played the right move at the right time. If I had castle already, could have done some other things also. So he played this move. So there's now... There's a cool variation after queen a4. Queen a4? Yeah, queen b5, queen a4. Oh, there's queen... Cool, I think there's a cool move there. Queen a4. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think... Actually, my cool move is terrible. Oh, you wanted to go c6, yeah, maybe? Yeah. To, yeah. To yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, idea would have been good, but the problem is knight b6 yeah, here. Yeah. I hate when that yeah. So. Is there an easier class? <laughs> 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 okay. I do that. I do that. Okay. So, so I'm pretty much forced here to take on a5. Otherwise, he's going to take my pawn. So I took, and what do you think he wants to do here? Does he want to just recapture? Or he has a better idea that he can try to do? Because if he captures, I castle and I think white is again, at least slightly better here. Better pawn structure, I have better control of the center. Can you kick for that? Exactly, b5. See, now he attacks my knight, and I have to move the knight. So then he can capture the pawn. So I went knight. I can go back, but if you have a choice, you always want to go to the center. So I went knight ce5, and now he played this move. It now looks like he's putting pressure. 
And now very strong move you need to find here. Because if you allow him to play rook a4 and block this pawn, then this is going to be a weakness for a long time. So the natural thing here would be to just try to castle here. But if you do that, he can play rook a4 and then try to develop his knight and a pawn is a weakness. Absolutely. Absolutely you play a4. Because you have a weakness, right? If you have a weakness, first thing, weak pawn, you think about how can I get rid of this weakness? And by playing a4, I will get rid of this weakness. You may think like, oh, you can check. But in this type of position, you can just simply come up. And he doesn't have really threats to your king, because you're going to move your queen up and then connect your rook. In fact, it's very likely that will be in the end game. And if it's an end game where you want your king to be. In the center. center, right? So it will be very useful to have a king only two in this position. Because if it's an end game, my king can quickly get to the C pawn, for example. Since he doesn't have uh, that much development, he cannot really take advantage of this idea. So not always you have to just castle and then, because sometimes you, have, you don't have time to castle. You have to go right away. Of course, if he had a light score vision, then I probably wouldn't do this. Because my king will be definitely vulnerable. But he doesn't have a light score vision, which is very important. And since I have the lead in development here, I can actually afford moving my king up here. And he can't really do much to take advantage of it. So he didn't go for this move because he didn't see what he can really gain out of this check. It will only help to connect my rook. So he took. So I have to take back the pawn. See. In this position, I had a weak pawn. He had a good pawn. By playing this, I exchange his good pawn, and I don't have a weakness anymore. Now, he has a weak pawn on c f uh, c7. So if the game goes on, he's going to end up with this weak pawn. So while my king is in the center, he plays this c5 move, trying to just exchange this weak pawn. So he played c5. Now, what should I do now? And also this way he protects his rook. How about we, we could do that, but I think it's time to play this move already. Which move? Castle. Of course. <laughs> OK? It's time to castle now. Because too many open lines, you know? You don't want now again to, so it's, it's time to castle because it will also be safe for the king, but also we can get the rook into the game. That's why. It's more important to get the rook into the game here. So he took, I think he can play queen b6. Activating his queen, attacking my bishop. And this was an inaccurate move. You know, he should have probably taken here, but even though we have the same type of pawn structure, but there is still some pressure here. Because you know he's not as well developed, and I will be able to get my rook in. So it's still slightly better disposition for me. But he should have gone for this continuation. So he played queen b6. And this turned out to be an inaccuracy that you know for a long time now he couldn't play this move anymore. Why? Which move you can play now so he cannot take on d4? Bishop a3, right? Bishop a3, OK. Of course, he saw this move. It's not like he missed this move. But he was counting on this reply, queen a6, forcing the exchange of the queens. And then he is going to capture back with the knight. I have to take it. I don't have a good way to retreat. So I took. Now he wants to remove his rook. and. Uh, in some point, protect the bishop so he can take. But it's not going to be easy to play this. So what you should do now? In a position like this, you always look and try to find that piece that it's not developed. 
correct. And now it goes 94. And this is that moment where I, I say that I want you to find this move here. Without this move, it's possible that he missed this move or perhaps underestimated. Because this is a kind of a hard move to see. Without this move, it's, it's, it's hard to have any advantage here. Okay. Yes. Uh, the knight to uh, see the number. D7. D7. Okay, knight to d7. He will go rook d8, attacking your knight. Mm -hmm. So let's say you capture, right? Mm -hmm. He takes. Mm -hmm. You take. And now it's a nice tactic, little tactic because of the back rank. He takes. Mm -hmm. You take, he takes. And you cannot take him because check and you get mated. Oh. So this way I will lose my advantage now and it's just going to be a draw. Okay? So it's so I want you to uh, think of this idea and, and try, you know, I'm sure in your games also sometimes you will have a position like this where you're kind of stuck and the natural moves they don't work. So you try to look for some kind of quiet moves that you know you improve your pieces basically it's uh, you know you need to improve one of your pieces here and if you look carefully which piece you think in this position white wants to improve very good knight on f3 needs to be improved but how Well, unfortunately, he's guarding d2, so he'll take us. So I can't go to d2. So d1 to d3. Excellent. Knight e1. Mm. But not only this, this is a very strong move. Not only this move is now I'm planning to improve the knight. What is the second idea behind this Kick move? The huh? Kick the knight. Uh -huh. Excellent. See? Now I want to play this move and move his knight. When I move his knight, now I can already try to win this pawn. So it's a multi-purpose move, trying to improve the knight, but at the same time creating a threat of f3. And now he's in trouble, because he can't really exchange this pawn. So most likely now he's going to lose a pawn. But again, one extra pawn against a very strong player, you know, it's, it's not like guarantee you win. You still have to try to win it. So you'll see now what happened. Knight e1. Now he plays rook a8. I think at this point he realized he's going to lose a pawn. So he said, OK, I'm going to try to have an active rook. Because you know, a lot of end games, even extra pawn. But if opponent pieces are active, then it's going to be very difficult to win. So what's the next move here for me? Yes. Yeah, white move, yeah. Here? Or here? Yeah. Well, you could, but you don't want to do that because he will just take. And if you take, and he just takes back and now he, he's going to be OK. It's going to be just equal. OK? So we don't want to take yet. Uh -huh. We could do that. Let's, but let's, let's try to. When you have a plan, you stick with the plan. OK? You made 91. What was the purpose behind 91? So we're playing F3. So that's right. Don't switch to call 96 now. When you choose a plan, you go with that plan. OK? So what's the right move here? You could go also knight d3, but the stronger is to play f3. You play this move, you attack the knight now. What is he going to do now? He needs to move the knight, yeah? yeah? But if he moves the knight, then we can just take a pawn. So if he moves the knight, we could actually take. 
and we are up a pawn. Okay? So now he decided to play this tricky move, bishop g5. Leaving his knight hanging, but attacking my pawn on e3. And now if I kick, this will be bad for me, because he will to go check, attacking the king and a rook. Then he would take, I would take, and he would just take the pawn. So I lose my rook, I lose two pawns, and now maybe I have to try to find a way to draw this game. But he's got two pounds. Value of the rook and two pounds, seven. Value of two minor pieces, six. So technically, we're down a pawn. The most we can get is a draw here, I think. Most. Okay. So now he plays this move, activating the bishop. Now you need to protect this. And you don't want to play f4, because then he will just simply go back and see. Now this knight is very strong. There is, I, I, I cannot move this knight anymore from here. So very interesting. He's basically doing an active defense. Instead of just going back, he's trying to counterattack. But you need to find this accurate move here. How can you protect the e3 pawn? Very good. Knight to c4, protecting the pawn. And again, the threat is still remaining. He's still, you know, we have this threat, okay? But now. Um, which pawn? Um, this pawn? Yeah, yeah, but I already showed that line. If you take, it's not very good because he takes check and takes your rook too. So you lose the rook. The rook is a very valuable piece. Okay? So you don't want to do that. So knight c4, but again, if he just goes back, you take the pawn. Okay? Now he plays another move, knight c7. Leaving his knight hanging. Okay, so now, okay, I took the knight, but now he plays this tactic. Rook takes a3. Mm -hmm. Do you see the, who's, who sees the idea behind this move now? Why did he do that? You August. You can't take the, knight, uh, the rook because then you drop the pawn. And Check the rook. and take. See? Very clever way he played here. Instead of just losing a pawn, again, now he's doing some tactics. I cannot take the rook. Because now he plays bishop e3 check and takes my rook on c1. Now, I need you to make a move that will stop that threat and creating a very strong threat. You eliminate his threat and you create a strong threat now. You could try to go knight f3, but he might be able to take check, take, take, I take, but he just goes back and yeah, I think it's probably going to be a draw here, okay? So the problem is our rook, as you can see, because when he takes check here, we have a problem, the rook is hanging. So what can we do about the rook? B1. Excellent move. Rook B1. The point of this move is you move away from this strong threat, bishop E3, and at the same time you're creating your own threat. Back rank checkmate. See, that's what you're trying to do now. You want to now, you stop his threat and you're creating the back rank checkmate. Now you have two threats actually. Back rank checkmate and just take the knight. So he is, he is forced to play this move now. He's got only one move here. Yes? Uh, here, instead of rook b1, would the knight c2 or king f2 be playable also? K 
King f2, probably not. Uh, probably both moves are not very good. He just takes now. And see the problem? Yeah. And if knight c2, the problem is this move now. This rook is too active. Mm. Pinning me, and I might, I might be in big trouble here, maybe losing even. Because I can just move this knight now. I can move this knight, I'm pinned. So I guess I can move this. Maybe I'm not losing, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not that good. I mean, this is just a very strong move. When you find this move, it's just you got to go for it. Because now, he's forced to play which move now? What is the only move that he can play here? Because otherwise, he's just losing. A8. Rook a8. See? It's a good way to force the piece to go back. Okay? You put your rook on open file, stop his threats, and force his active rook to go back. So this is a good way to do it. And now, finally, what do we do now? Finally. Peshka. Yeah. <laughs> pawn, right? Yeah. So we take the pawn. Now, I'm up a pawn, but I have these double pawns here. They're double pawns, but in fact, they're pretty strong because they're guarding a lot of squares. So see, for example, this knight can never come here. So they look weak, but actually they guard a lot of important squares here. So position is close to be winning, but still I have to show good technique. And this guy is very experienced, so if you give him a chance, he might try to come up with some drawing chances. Would it have been a better chance instead of knight c7 if he had played knight to d2? Ba back here? Yeah, knight to d2. Knight to d2. I was thinking you'd play king f2, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, I, I, I think I've looked at that. I've looked at this move. I was Is probably going to play. Did, both bad? I think they're both pretty bad because in this position also, uh, the point of the 92 move is again trying to deflect this piece. So this would be very bad because of bishop e3 idea. Check, and he takes the knight. So, so I think I was planning to play uh, king f2. Now I think probably knight takes knight, and rook takes, huh, but wait, he can take now. So there must be something better here for me, because uh, if he managed to take, then he could be OK. So we need to find a better move here. Let's see. Let's try to find a better move here for white. Um, OK, so I think I remember now. I think f4. Now the bishop is under attack, so black needs to take first. The difference is now his bishop is under attack. So now he probably goes back here. And yeah, we just probably go knight d3. And so we, we will end up again with extra pawn here. It's possible, actually, this could be a better version, because at least now I'm not very active with the rook. It's possible that knight b2 could be an improvement. So, but he played knight c7, I took, and rook b1 is a very important move, and now he plays here, and I'm up a pawn. Although my pawns are weak, so he plays king f8, trying to bring his king into the game, mm -hmm. and also, you know, this stops the back rank threat. Now, which piece now you want to bring into the game? Here. Knight on e1, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I would say D3. You could go to D3. Is there any other square you can go to that you can? How about F3? Aha, uh -huh, F3 to get a tempo, right? We bring the knight to F3 and we attack the bishop. Mm -hmm. That's a tempo, right? Remember that. Now, after I play this move, he plays rook A4. Another active idea. You know, I'm attacking his bishop. He is activating his rook. And now, if I take the bishop, he will take my knight. So this will be s some chances for him. B8? Well, b8, he just comes up. B5? 
knight to d2, knight f to d2. We need to keep the knight on c4 to protect the e3 pawn. So we go knight f d2, and now I'm already ready to activate my rook to the seventh rank, to move this knight away and start pushing the c pawn. Okay? So knight f to d2, he plays king to e7. I could go rook b7, but I decided that I also should bring my king into the game. Because the pawns are weak, and in the endgame you want to bring the king to be closer to the center. So I played king f2. Now he's pinning me, so I cannot move my knight. King f3. See, this, this, this pawn is really restricting this knight. If the knight comes in into the game, it's going to be more difficult for me. But his knight is misplaced here, and he cannot really come in. So my pawns are actually doing a good job restricting his pieces. Now my king is also closer to the center after king f3. Now he goes rook c2. And now what can you do now? You could go rook b7, but then he has this d7 square maybe for his king. Yeah, knight d5, king c8 maybe. Well, your rook will be hanging here. The rook will be hanging. So the better option is to go with c6 first to control the square, and then you go rook b7. Then he'll be forced to go king d8. OK? And remember, you have a pass pawn. Try to push it, yeah? Of course, you have to make sure you don't lose it. But here, this gives me some control of squares too. So I played c6. Now he goes rook a2. By the way, black really cannot do much here. He can't really activate his pieces, so he's really stuck here. So he goes rook a2. And now, next few moves, I'm just activating all my pieces here. Now we're very close to the victory here. Very close. Now, which piece we need to activate first? Absolutely. Rook belongs on the seventh rank. And especially when you do this, you pin him. So he's forced to play the only move, king d8. Now, now we need to activate our knights. Okay? We can't move this knight because this knight is hanging, right? Knight b3, correct? He goes rook a6, attacking the pawn. Knight to e5, f6. Knight f7, Knight f7 check. Mm -hmm. King c8 only move. He wants to take your pawn here. You could go knight d4, but improve the position of the knight first on f7. Knight d6 check. King goes back to d8. Now we need to protect, so we go knight d4. So as you can see, in just a few moves now, I have my knights very active, my rook on a 7th rank, and I protected my pawn on c6. Now, rook a8, he can't really do anything. It's really very rare where he could win a game like this against various, he's uh, about 2,700 players, Tiviako, very experienced player. So now he goes rook a8. Knight takes pawn. Knight takes pawn check. Very nice. Because I have the king and the mating net, right? Checkmate. 
So he didn't take that. So he goes here, only move. There are many ways to win here. But which, which move is the best here? What do you think? Well, in fact, yeah, it's really, <laughs> I could just take. <laughs> I didn't do that, though. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the trick. If you do that, he takes this knight. There could be a problem. I actually wanted to mate him, and I think I got, I could just take the knight, of course. It's just easily winning. That's what I did. I played knight f5 check. So now he has to take. And I simply take the knight. Threatening checkmate. I think you missed his chance to resign after 96. <laughs> I was I was expecting it, was you know, but that was a proper time but to but this was very important game. This was the uh, one round before the last, you know. So it was a big tournament and you know pretty pretty big prize fund also. So <laughs> <laughs> so he was uh, upset, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he was hoping for the heart attack defense. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, we're still trying to make the forty moves. I guess maybe that's I don't know. So now he took my knight. I took, and here he realized that he's going to get mated, or if he plays rook e8, what do you do? Knight to g7 check. check. He goes <laughs> back. <laughs> now we go check. He goes here. And now we should just go rook d7 here. And now we're still threatening checkmate. <coughs> And uh, no, it's not really a checkmate, but uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, the pawn is going into it's. I mean, threatening mate in two actually check. So he probably has to play this move now if he doesn't want to get mated. But check anyway. Just you know, we can just everything wins. You can just take and push the c pawn. Okay. So yeah, he resigned here after rook c7 move. Uh, after I played rook c7, he resigned here. We have some time, so I want to do a couple of positions, okay? See if we can solve these positions. Now. Okay. White to play. And you can make a draw in this position. Can I bet against them? Okay. You need to find a very strong idea here. What do you think, what you can do here to be able to draw? You know it? Keep the king out. Keep the king out. OK, that would be nice, but it's not so easy. White to play and draw, yeah. Knights? I mean black pawns Yeah, pawns are going this way, yeah. And you're going this way. You're you're down a pawn, but you can you can draw this game. King G3. Well, if you go to King G three, he's gonna go King E one. And if you try to win his pawn, he's gonna get behind. If once he gets behind your pawn, you're gonna lose because you can only take one pawn and he takes your pawn, and then he can just simply promote his pawn. Okay? So that's why, and you can't really uh, stop him from, I even if you play this move here, you're eventually going to run out of moves after king d2. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, if you go king g1, he goes king e1. You have to come up, then he goes king e2. If you move it here, he goes king f1 and he gets behind it. When the king gets behind it, you lose. Okay? There is only one move here you can play here that is not going to allow him to do that. What did you say? Okay, good. King h1. Yes, it looks very strange. <laughs> you move away from your pawn. But by playing this move, you actually get the opposition. And this is called distant opposition, okay? Oh, he can't get behind. 
He can't get behind the F1. That's the whole point. Now, if he comes here, what do you do? G1. If he now comes up, King G2. If he goes here, Now he goes here. Ah, see if you go F2 then? I can get behind it. So you again, you try to keep the opposition, okay? You and make sure there are three squares between both kings. Okay? So that's distant opposition here. So you go king h3 and again, there are three squares between each king. So now he goes back. King h2. Now he goes back to d1. And I place g4. Uh-huh. See? The final trick I did and you took. The important thing was to answer instantly. There you go. <laughs> and it's a queen. Push. Push. Unfortunately, he queens with the check. If he didn't queen with the check, it would have been great. But he wins. Now, when he plays this move, it's, you don't need to rush. You need to see. Maybe you can do something else. It's not like you were forced to take. Oh, I G2. Excellent. Yeah. King up to G2.